how to build a sales team, how to build the best sales team. And this, this goes for regular employees as well, non-sales people. Um, this is the biggest single trick that I employ on my wait staff. And anybody can do this, any kind of industry can do this, whether you're a car salesman, whether you sell bricks, um, makeup. It, it, this is the single most important thing right here that you can do to train your sales staff. Quizzes. Quizzes, quizzes, quizzes. You quiz your staff. We have something here at my restaurant called a pop quiz. And it's five questions and they're done daily. Before we open up the door here and let people in the dining room, we have just a pop quiz, five questions. And a lot of them are very simple questions, but it keeps my staff on their toes and it allows this, the bus staff progress one level up or two levels up and all of a sudden work into a server position. So for example, some of the questions on my pop quiz would be, uh, where's our salmon come from? Is our beef grass fed? Where's our burger beef come from? What's so special about our salt? Where is our salt from? Where's our shrimp from? Um, you know, do we have Italian wine? If so, um, you know, what page is it on in the wine list? So then all these questions just accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. And it's, you're, you're not there to make the staff feel bad. You're there as an educational purpose. Uh, so don't, don't, don't employ this to be like, oh, you failed, you failed, you failed. Go there, go over the answers, make it a team learning event. And now for us, we have like 50 different pop quizzes. At a certain point, that staff member is gonna get the same pop quiz again. And hopefully the second time around, they're gonna do a lot better than the first time. Um, now I gotta tell you, a lot of my staff know really the ins and outs of my food and, and what's going on here at the restaurant. So they ace it just like that. It, it's a total thing, just ace, 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 ace. So what they do is now they become a mentor and help the other people that don't quite know the answers. And the people that don't know the answers are told, hey, go find the answers. Don't let me tell you the answer. I want you to go find the answer yourself. So sometimes the answers are right in front of them. Sometimes all they do is just, is just basically grab a menu, right? All they have to do is grab a menu and say, hey, you know, we use this product or this is the name or this is the farm. And, and all of a sudden that's that simple where the resources are in front of them. I remember when I was in, in culinary school, um, I was in baking class, pastry class, and there was a project on, um, chocolate or my assignment was chocolate and everybody was in the library doing their work this was before the internet was really prevalent you could go and i remember back when i was in, in culinary school if you googled eggplant you'd come up with like 1900 searches <laughs> now if you google eggplant it's like 40 million searches come up so <laughs> results so that that's it, the, in, the the internet was in its infancy i mean we were still back on i think dos mode i mean it was it was it wasn't something that that you Maybe, I mean, I'm sure it was after DOS mode, but um, if anybody knows DOS mode. So, Prodigy was a big thing back then, Prodigy Internet. <laughs> that was like one of the first first things here in New York. So back to, the, back to this, this chocolate report. Everybody's in the library looking things up, trying to get things. I walked outside the classroom and in the hallway of the culinary school, there's all these posters. So I sat there, my pen and paper, and I took notes off of the poster. So <clears throat> the teacher didn't know it. And once we went over all of our grades and went over our projects to share to teach other, other culinary students, you know, this topic, that topic, vanilla beans, whatever it was, mine was chocolate. And he goes, Marcus, where did you get this information from? And I said, well, to be honest with you, right outside the door here, it's, it's right in front of my face. The information's right in front of my face here. And he, he, he's an old German guy, and the way, his, the way he started, he started uh, with this exclamation of, of talking, I was like, oh shoot, I'm in trouble. He was like, finally, finally somebody uses the stuff in right in front of them. And I, of course I got an A and he congratulated me and made a big deal saying, hey, the information is in front of you guys. Use what's in front of you. That's what I tell my staff. The information's right here. And a lot of times, like if you're, if you're a car salesman, have the employees go sit in the car. Have them check out all the buttons. Have them drive the car. How frustrating is it for a customer to walk into a place and not know what that car's capability is? I've bought 
some cars that I bought, the salesman doesn't really know everything about it. And granted, some are used cars and it's not the model they're selling, but still, get in the car, learn about it, watch a quick YouTube video now. The information's right in front of you. Test drive the thing. It's frustrating when you have to go. I bought my van and I basically had to tell him, well, I'm looking for one with this option and this one doesn't have this option because I was doing my own research, right? So if you're a car salesman and somebody's coming in and say, hey, I'm looking for a, a used Jeep and you're not a Jeep dealer, you're gonna wanna do a little bit of research about that Jeep to be able to sell the customer on it because he can, he can honestly go to a Jeep dealer and hopefully get all the information he needs. But if you've got that Jeep sitting out in front of your parking lot, know what's on there and as a sales, so as a sales manager for this car lot, new car comes in you need to write the most common selling specs of that jeep what are the most common points of that jeep is it low mileage um is it you know all-wheel drive is it one owner what are the what are the above and beyond features does it have an extra lift kit on it and quiz all of the car salesmen in that lot on that in that company about that pop quiz them quiz them here you go and do it two, three days in a row until they understand that this car, here are the five points that you wanna tell everybody that walks in the door, if they're looking at that Jeep out in the parking lot, here's what you gotta know right then and there, and bam. So quizzing is super, super beneficial for sales, but it's really beneficial for everything, uh, for every type of employee. So here's a good example. Um, if you have a secretary, if you have an assistant, um, you know, you can simply say to them, hey, just quiz them like, hey, um, who came to visit me today? What were my appointments today? What, what were my phone messages today? What were um, what were other people doing? What 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 you know? Trying to pick up on things where it's not like you're like throwing a quiz at them, but you're asking them questions that are going to make them step back. Like say, um, hey, uh, how did your ten o'clock meeting go? You know, let's let's say let's say your associate, uh, you, some person under you is interviewing somebody. You say, hey, how'd that ten o'clock interview go? And they're like, oh, good. What'd you like about them? What, what experience on their resume stood out to you? So then now the person has to think, well, what was on their resume that stood out? Well, out of all the questions you asked them, what questions did they not have, were they not able to answer or do you not feel comfortable with the answer? And then flip it around and say, what question was the best question they answered? You know, so it's kind of like that person's now held accountable for what they're doing. And the same thing when you're interviewing somebody, right? When I interview somebody, I look at their resume and so oh, that's nice, you worked at um, Bill Bob's Barbecue. What'd you do at Bill Bob's Barbecue? Oh, I was a cook. What kind of things did you cook? Oh, we cook, cooked entrees. Well, tell me what were their entrees? What did they serve? Oh, we served ribs, we served chicken. What was the most popular entree? Um, well, was the chicken. Did you, how did you ever run out of the chicken? What did you do when you ran out of the chicken? How long did the chicken take to cook? Did you cook the whole dish or was somebody else prepped the chicken? Were you involved in the smoking process? Were you involved in just in a certain... See, so now all of a sudden you're asking more questions that are gonna make them more accountable and soon enough, you will find out if that employee, that you're, that prospected employee that you're hiring, that you're interviewing, is qualified or just BSing you. The same thing with your staff. You just simply ask a question, then ask another question, go back into the layer effect, and then all of a sudden you get to the third layer, the fourth layer, until they can't answer a question anymore. But it's just it's just friendly questions. Like, hey, tell me about that, what you did. Hey, what, you know, how'd your meeting go? What did, the, what did the client like about about our product? What didn't the client like about our product? Um, is the client looking at any other any other competitors? What, you know, this, this, and this, and and all of a sudden things start adding up. But back, if you're in the service industry, if you're a restaurant watching this, if you own a restaurant, if you're a restaurant manager, quiz your staff every single day. Now, a lot of places do roll calls where it's like, okay, 4.30 roll call, here's today's specials, this, this, and this. And there's never an, an, an inter, uh, uh, it's only a one way communication where you're talking to your staff. You want the communication to come back from your staff. So even if it's just like, hey, what was, what was the feedback on yesterday's specials? The special's been on the menu for three days. Bob, how'd that, how'd that special go yesterday? I see you sold four, five, six, or 10, or 12. How many did you sell, Bob? So let Bob think, well, gee, I, I sold 12. Well, what was the guest reaction from that dish? Um, did they eat it all? Did they, what, what, what were the guest comments? Did, did anybody, was anything, you know, 
Did everybody, did anybody take it to go, uh, to go home? Did, was there anything left over is what I'm trying to get at? Did, did, did the, were the plates clean? What, were, were any comments, reactions? So now all of a sudden you're quizzing them based upon an experience they had with a guest. Um, so then all of a sudden you can say, well, gee, we're selling this dish like crazy. Maybe we can raise it a buck. Or we're not selling this dish, gang. What do we need to do to sell this dish? What do we have to do? You know, we have two, three salmons here. We got to sell the fish. We got to move it. What do we all have to do to sell this? And you ask these questions. What do you have to do? Why aren't you selling it? When, when you talk to the table about it, what are you saying? Give me your spiel. Let's role play. Let's pretend that I'm the guest and tell me how you sell it to me. I do this to my staff all the time. And I do a lot of managing by wandering around. So it's like, I see something going wrong here. I call them over and said, hey, I noticed you did that. And I'd like you to do it this way, you know? And I explain, I'm, man I'm managing by wandering around. But at the same time, I'm following up and I'm quizzing my staff and I'm correcting as it happens. I tell my staff, a lot of this is on the job training. On the job training, when I cannot teach you, I, I, if I set you down in a classroom for, I don't know, 40 hours before you ever saw my dining room, and started touching guests, if I sit down for 40 hours, you're still not gonna know everything I need to teach you about every scenario that's gonna happen. There's gonna be scenarios in this restaurant and in your business as well that pop up like that that you have to address on the fly, on the, on the spot, and have to be corrective. Now, some employees aren't hip on, on being you know, corrected, like especially in the middle of their workload. And you have to explain yourself, this is an ongoing training process. You are ongoing training. You are on the floor. You're in the realms of this building. I'm going to make friendly corrections. I'm going to make critiques. I'm going to make us a better restaurant. I'm going to make us a better organization. Because the bottom line is, the more people that walk in that front door, the better experience they have, the better everybody in this restaurant is going to do. The better I, I'm going to do, the better you're going to do. So that's what we're all here for. We're all here for the same objective, is to take care of the guest. So make sure you start quizzing your staff, even if it's just friendly fire questions. You know, I said to myself, hey, what's in the bean dip? I went around yesterday and asked every single bus person, what's in the bean dip? And you know why I did it on yesterday? Well, yesterday being Valentine's Day, because we had a lot of people in my restaurant that are not familiar with the restaurant. A lot of people go out on Valentine's Day who normally don't go out. They might go out to a nicer restaurant that they have not experienced before. So my main goal was, to go to all my bus staff and make sure, even though they've been taught this before, they've been taught and they know this. I just popped quiz them, I pull them all aside, hey, what's in the bean dip tonight? Tell me how you're describing the bread to people. Because the first contact that they really get, um, besides the server coming over and talking, the first food they really get on their table is the first thing they're gonna put in their mouth is our bread. And our bread and our white bean dip, and a lot of people are expecting butter. We don't serve butter, we have butter, it's on request. You drop, the bread off, I want them to say, hey, this is bread, bread alone's whole wheat niche bread, and it's served with our organic white bean dip. That's all. And if they say, oh, what's in the white bean dip? Then the staff needs to be able to rattle off, hey, it's white beans, it's rosemary, it's thyme, it's olive oil, and it's high quality salt that we use. And that's it. Right to the point and simple. So, my, again, my staff knows all that, but I quizzed them again just to make sure that they were on top of it. I was following up. Quiz, 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 quiz. And when they, get, when they get all these questions right, the staff is like, yeah, I can do this. I can do this totally, totally, totally. For me, before I move a, sta a, a server, a, a, somebody into a server position, I actually, my wife and I will sit down and they will, we will be the guests for them for one time, two times, three times, and we'll drill the most common questions. But we actually throw it back in their lap and say, hey, I want you to tell me what I should be eating here tonight. What's good in this restaurant? What is, you know, a friend of mine, Jim Rowe, loves to say this when we go out to dinner with him. He's in, he lives out west in, in, uh, in Seattle, Seattle area, Ellensburg, Washington. So when we get together at restaurant conferences, we always go out. He looks at the wait staff and he says right to them, what's my death row meal? Meaning, hey, it's my last night alive. This is on the death row. What do you have that's so good here that's gonna make this a memorable meal? And he drills out with every single person, you know? So he puts them on the spot and that makes that server think like, wow, I gotta put, this is this person's last meal here, right? I have to make that meal so spectacular. What am I gonna give them, okay? And I tell, I said to my staff, hey, death row meals. What are your death row meals? 
What would you suggest to somebody, it's their last meal ever. What are they going out with a bang with? What are we gonna showcase? What is our strong points here? What do people come here for? So, enough rambling. Quiz, 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 you get the point. Quiz your staff, no matter what level they are, keep quizzing. Chef Marcus Giuliano, thanks for watching. Head over to 50mistakes.com, 50mistakes.com. I have a book over there, 50 Mistakes Business Owners Make, with all kinds of stuff like this. It's a fantastic book. Uh, the website 50mistakes.com has tons and tons of free videos you can watch and stuff like this with a lot of, of very powerful information, very powerful videos. And if you apply some of those techniques, guaranteed thousands and thousands of dollars in return from watching a free video. So head over there, 50mistakes.com. I also send out emails periodically. And, uh, and uh, you know, when new videos come up like this, I like to email them out. So thanks for watching. Have a good one. Leave some comments.